Hello everyone, so now I'll teach you how to do the shoulder guard from the uh, comic called Battle Chaser. Okay, so the reference is over here, reference Battle Chaser. And then we go into this folder over here. And uh, we are going to do Kali Battle. So this is the character Kali Battle from the comic Battle Chaser. I watched this uh, comic 20 years ago, I think. And uh, it's pretty cool. I really like the uh, guard over here and I was inspired by another video over here. So this is a tutorial for Garrison's uh, shoulder guard. And uh, it just shows you a time lapse of this uh, full uh, shoulder guard. And his uh, reference, I'll show you again in the front. Reference looks like this. Okay, so this is a garrison. Uh, this is a 2D character from the same comic. And uh, his shoulder guard looks like this. And uh, when I look at a time lapse like this, there's quite a lot of techniques that I can pick it up. And um, it might be a little bit harder for you to pick it up because the video is a little bit fast. So I'll try to translate some of the knowledge I've learned from this uh, YouTuber, uh, Vern v v Studio. Sorry, pronunciation is not very good. But um, very cool techniques that I see. And I hope uh, you'll be able to enjoy and learn that at a slower speed as well. Okay, so that was what inspired my, uh, my, my project for this week and I think uh, making hard survey stuff like this uh, requires a lot of patience, a lot of techniques and a lot of smart ways of modeling and uh, it's one of the best ways for us to learn in ZBrush. All right, So uh, that's why I chose this subject this week and this is the 3D game where they recreated uh, Calibretto's uh, model into 3D recently. Okay so you can see the 3D uh, reference here, maybe you will see the guard a little bit better for you to understand the shape. I crop the uh, reference like this so that we can put in uh, pure ref a little bit easier. And the uh, resolution is not very high because I can't find very high resolution. But anyway, this is some of the comic scenes, all right? So I think uh, it's really cool. I personally love this comic quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it still looks good. To this day, you know, always a classic. So hope you guys enjoy that as well. Um, drawing some of the drawings here. Okay, you can see it's all really really cool. So I'm also sharing this um, comic online with you. So if you're interested, you can click it and have a look. And the 3D uh, art station page the, from the game uh, Better Chasers Night War. Okay, and uh, developed by Airship Syndicate and published by this company. Alright, so this is the main character, this is the garrison character, this is the golem character, Caliberto, and we can look at the 3D scene. Okay, so we can, you can also look at a reference from here, so we are going to be doing this, yeah? Alright, so the technique that I'm going to use later will be uh, a little bit different, so I'm going to follow this uh, tutorial. So we are going to, so this is a tutorial to create a book. Okay, so you can see what he does is that he's using Z, Z app link, Z app projection, and uh, he will project this uh, image like a painting from Photoshop, and then he'll project it as a polyframe color, poly color, poly paint color, and uh, he can change the poly paint color into mask, change the mask into abstract, extract thickness and then has the thickness on a separate layer and then uh, put it back on the book. So it's a very simple technique but also really smart and uh, I was inspired by that to create a simple method like this to uh, match with our shoulder guard like this. Okay so this is not exactly a shoulder guard, it's a leg guard but um, I'll just call it shoulder guard to make things easier for me to um, to talk about. All right, so. So later, because I'm using this technique, I'm also going to be flattening this whole piece. Okay, so this piece is currently rounded, right? But please try to visualize this as a flat piece. So imagine if you are a blacksmith, okay, maybe uh, from the olden days, you need to build it. So you build a long piece first, flat, and then you would you would create the, the sides of this thing, you know? So you create the sides and uh, and so you so you create the sides and then later we'll go to the top view to fold it so it becomes a rounded piece like this 
Okay, so just imagine it's a flat piece so that uh, I can do a projection from the top view. Then it will make more sense for you. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. I'll go to ZBrush. We will open up a cube. Press No from Lightbox Cube. And I'm just going to go to Geometry. Tools, Geometry, and I am going to delete the subdivision here. Okay, so because this cube has a subdivision level, I want to use a dynamized resolution, so I don't want the subdivision. So please remember to delete this. Delete this. Okay, once it's deleted, I also off my perspective distortion. And uh, now it's good. Okay, so without a subdivision, I can close this now, and uh, I can start using this as a Dynamesh. Okay, I'm just going to shape it like this. I want a long piece, like what I mentioned just now. Imagine this as a flat piece, and uh, I'm going to make it arch later. You know, I'm going to arch it this way later. Okay, but for now it's flat. It's going to be flat for now. And the top view later, when I arch this finish, will look like this. Alright, so something like that. But for now, just keep in mind it's going to be flat. So we make it flat and then we make sure the symmetry is still on the on the X axis. Dynamic resolution, bump it up to 550, pretty high. And I go ahead and do a dynamic to it. So I think it, that will give us uh, 1 point something million polys. And uh, my shape is currently more like a rectangle. Currently more like a rectangle shape. So that's going to be fine for me. Okay, so uh, 1.2 million poly, that's good. And now I'm going to start to do a Z app link projection. How do we start a Z app link projection? Go to documents. And then I'm just going to bring this document to the right side. If you press on this uh, small arrow, small button here, you can move it all the way to the right side. And uh, open it up, Z app link properties. So I mentioned to you before last week about custom view one and custom view two. I've also given you a shortcut, which is F6. So if you just press uh, custom view one, when the when our current view is like this. So it will store the current view to custom view one, if that's what you're pressing for the first time. Subsequently, once the view is saved, we can always press F6 or custom view one to jump back to this view. So we each hand, rotate, 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 custom view one, change, you come back here. So really handy for us to save this view. Okay, so I also talked about this last week. So. We have this custom view saved so that we can use Z app link. So all this is under documents. Once the custom view one is set, I'll do a Z app link. Do a final check on your resolution, make sure it's high enough. And then if it's high enough, I'll go ahead and press Z app link. So what this does is a pop up window and I'll just say okay. And it's going to link Photoshop as the app to open. And uh, it will automatically create a file for you to edit in Photoshop. <clears throat> so in Photoshop, you see this file. Um, anyway, if your if your the computer cannot locate Photoshop, you may need to troubleshoot this. But for mine, is pretty straightforward. Okay, so I hope you don't have any problems with this. Anyway, um, it's giving you the direction very very simple. So the top file, do not edit. So listen to what it says. Do not edit. So the bottom file is the only file that we will edit. So we can go ahead and add layers here, but in the end, it's going to match to, it's going to merge to the bottom file over here, the one in green. Okay, so we can create a new layer, and then we can do a black paint on it. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then later we can convert this into mass, and then we can extract this out. Okay, but of course I'm not gonna do it like this. I'm gonna do it really nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the shape of this, and I'm gonna imagine how this looks in the top view. And I'm gonna do my best to uh, make it as nice as possible. And I'll try to make it smooth. I'll use a walk-on pen. And I'm just gonna do a quarter of this um, quarter of this shoulder guard. And then I'll quarter because I'll be able to do symmetry on the rest. Alright, so something like this.
trying to concentrate on the corners to get the all my shape. And imagining the uh, the view from the top view. All right. So the con maybe one of the tricky part is the round part over here, and I'm just using my Wacom pen, so I don't think it's too much of a challenge. If it's really very challenging for you, uh, maybe you can use a lasso. You can also use one of this cylinder stuff over here. Actually, I might use it, as it might help just a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm also using that. So just have a lasso to. Make things a little bit straighter. And not sure. I think I want this to be even straighter. Yeah, I want it to be kind of like this, but. Sorry, when I concentrate, I talk a bit lesser. So, so just concentrate on the one quarter piece, and then now I'll do uh, another rectangle on the right side. Here, I'm going to do something smart. I'll right click and use a perspective so that I'll create a, something like a flat pyramid on the top, and then I'll just fit this in here. Okay, so keep in mind, I'll just do a rectangle, a quarter of a piece, so I'm not worried too much of the excess pieces. I would actually delete them later. So I'm just using all these pieces to create a symmetry. So still thinking about symmetry, still editing a little bit, still t making things a little bit straighter. And I think I'm almost done. So I think what I want to do is actually I'm going to just pop this up a bit more. Okay, so I want here to have kind of like a V shape. Maybe I'm doing that a little bit too much. Okay. Something like this, not too much. Okay, so I'll flatten this again. And yep. Okay, now I've got this shape, right? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get this shape right too. I want to make sure it's really nice when I bring it to symmetry. I did a control J to duplicate it. You can just duplicate it by pressing right click, control T, flip vertical first. I'll flip it vertically. Go ahead and merge it down. I'll shape it correctly. I don't need to be too um, anal about the how it's gonna look over here. Then the, I'll just do the same for the horizontal. Okay, so I'll shape it more like this. And yeah, okay, so this is what I ended up with. All right, so this whole piece is pretty good. And uh, before I flatten it to the custom one layer, I just want to copy this layer. Okay, so I'll select all. Do a marquee like this, select all, control C to copy, press control N to create a new document, press enter, and then I'll paste. Okay, so I'll have this spare document over here to have my working file over here in case something goes wrong. Because what ZApp link will do is that it wouldn't save my layer, I don't think so. So I'll just, it's okay, I'll just merge it down to the custom one layer, and then the, I'll press control W to save this and then in Photoshop sorry in ZBrush I'll just press re-enter so when it's re-enter it will show me the this uh, window over here and then it, if you press double side you will be projected the 
polypane to the other side as well. So I'll just press accept and now our polypane is in. We so if we look at the tools and the polypane off, we will off the polypane. Okay, so now the we would go to masking because uh, we don't actually want to deal with polypane, right? What we want to deal with is so I'll just off the colorize button so that we don't deal with polypane. Mask by color. So under tools, huh? this is still under tools. Masking. Mask by color. Select. Mask by intensity. Okay, once you press this, we will create the mask over here. And uh, this is exactly where we want it to be. We have the mask, boys. We have the boys. We have the mask. <laughs> Device. Okay, we have the mask, and uh, now we can go to uh, sub tool, and then we will bring up the the smoothness value to the highest. Okay, now we are under sub tool. We have our mask on, and then go ahead and press extract, and then accept. You have to press accept so that the extracted model will create will be created as a separate sub tool. So if not it will just remain as a preview. Alright. Remember to pump up the smooth resolution. I think that will help us get it to be really smooth. And the thickness maybe you can adjust as well. But uh, for now I'll just use default. Alright, so let me go ahead and do that extract. And it's indeed it's a bit thin. So I'll just pump out the thickness 0.5 Strike too much 0 0.08. Extract that's good for me. Okay, 0 0.08. Accept. All right, so we finally reached this stage, and then I'll just go ahead and control drag to off the mask. So the default mask on this piece, I'll off it as well. So I'll off the mask on both of these tools, and I'll start working on this uh, on the next video. Alright, so I hope you learned stuff from this uh, tutorial and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!